Greetings and welcome to Mentor Me Memorable Moments. I am your host, Tracy Ever Duncan, and you are probably viewing me at Listen Vision Studios at WLVS Radio through www.listenvisionlive or through my website, mentorme411.com. Again, welcome to 150 nations, I'm sorry, 135 nations in all 50 states to Mentor Me Memorable Moments. This is the financial health segment tonight, and we've got a guest in our first segment, and then you've got the pleasure of listening to me in the second segment. But this is a guest that uh, appeared on Mentor Me Memorable Moments last year, about June, July timeframe, and he was exciting. And so we just had to have him back, Sir Charles Carey. And if you've forgotten him, well, we've got a little video that we want to introduce to you or refresh your memory. So Mike, if you could run Sir Charles Carey's introduction, please. When was the last time you heard a speaker or trainer excited about their message and sold on delivering that message to you? Sir Charles Carey, the motivator, the educator, the Amazon bestseller, the alternative recourse expert. He says the right mindset is all you need. Warm, heartfelt, and meaningful. You've seen him in the community. You've seen him in the media. Sir Charles Carey, two-time cancer survivor and full-time life encourager. From New York to Texas, Boston to Chicago, Detroit to DC. Charles has been on radio, television, and in print. A Toastmaster, a counselor, and a member of the National Speakers Association. He's touched lives around the country, and now he's got the Cure Series just for you. The creator of Radiate the Brain and Change the Game, and the author of the Amazon bestseller, Courage Facing Mortality, Cancer Wasn't My Only Obstacle. Whether he's training in government or speaking to private industry, he believes in speaking with purpose and training with passion. The alternative recourse expert, Sir Charles Carey. Sir Charles Carey, are you there? I am right here, Tracy. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I tell you, I call you the Renaissance man. You can do a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah, you know, I tell you, I am grateful for all the opportunities. And, uh, you know, I just love uh, using the gifts that have been given to me. All right, all right. Well, you know what? This is your segment. Welcome back to Mentor Me Memorable Moments. Everyone, I am the host of the program, Tracy Everett Duncan, and I'm usually here with my co-host, um, William Craig III, but he's got the night off tonight. But we're going to turn this over to Sir Charles Carey. Okay, all right. Well, first of all, I'd like to say thanks for having me. Um, you know, anytime I have the opportunity of sharing with an audience on any platform, you know, I don't take it for granted. Uh, I'm honored, and, I, you know, I look at it as an opportunity to really to make a difference. You know, someone has made a difference in my life, so I have the opportunity of returning the favor. Well, thank you. So what's been going on since you've been here last? Boy, what's been going on? <laughs> I see there you all is... over social media. <laughs> you know, I, I tell you, you know, I, I've, I've done a series of interviews. I'm always... Interviewer. Sir Charles, you're breaking up a little. Sir Charles, are you there? Is this any better? Yes, it is. Fantastic. Yeah, you know, I've done a lot of interviews and in, in, in traditional radio, uh, non-traditional radio. I've done a lot of, of traveling, but one of the most exciting things I can say that's coming up is in March or this first quarter, um, we're going to be debuting the reality show, Yay! the keynote. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I'm really excited. Uh, it's an opportunity for myself as well as some of my peers and colleagues to um, show our stuff on the big screen. Now you know, I know I, you were advertising or you were giving us notification last year. Can you tell us a little bit about the reality show? Well, the keynote is what the reality show is called. And what happened was they took nine speakers, trainers, authors, and coaches. They put us in a mansion in Tampa, Florida, cameras everywhere, private <laughs> chef, masseuse, and we had a ball. But, it, you know, it was all fun and games, but it wasn't at the same time. 
it was an opportunity or, or a great experience to work with and against other professionals in our industry and learn at the same time. Mm-hmm. Now, I know technically you always learn or you should be, but um, a lot of these reality shows, you see a lot of infighting and you know, negativity, but we really supported one another, although we were competing against one another. Okay, what are you competing for? Well, we're competing to work with the 32nd top speaker in the world, a gentleman by the name of Del Toro McNeil. You know, he's uh, had the opportunity of putting us on his personal platform uh, where he does conferences with all of the top players in the game. And just to be in that company, the things you can learn and the, I guess, the credibility that you earn uh, by being on that platform is second to none. So, so that's where the uh, the the R and the reward comes from. Well, do you have to stay for weeks at a time, or do you get to come home after a shoot? No, we have to stay there. You have to stay in the mansion uh, the entire time. Well, now they've got two seasons done. We've got two seasons done, but the first season was with a different set of people, which I am included. The second season is an entirely different cast, so... Um, but we did have to stay there the entire time. Um, I mean, every day was totally different. Well, totally different. Just one more question about the reality show. Is this sure. a, a process of elimination, or do you all just finish together as a team? Well, that's how it differs from most reality shows. Uh, it was not a process of elimination per se, but what would happen would be um, you would get an opportunity uh, of bettering one another. I guess you could say it that way. Um, and I don't want to let too much out the bag because in March you're going to see it for yourself and you get a chance to see um, probably people that you know. For, for those that are on social media, I'm sure everyone on social media may have seen or may know someone that participated in this reality show because we all came from all around the country, so oh, wonderful. that was part of the beauty of it. Wonderful, wonderful. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you've got a reality show going on, and like I said, you've been busy yeah. out there. What else is going on with Sir Charles? Well, um, thanks to Ted. You know Ted, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know I him very well. <laughs> I have an opportunity of having my own radio program uh, <laughs> coming up with uh, Listen Vision, and I'm so excited. <laughs> Um, that uh, you extended that opportunity to me. So, you know, maybe we'll talk a little more about that later, but um, that's another thing that will be happening in 2016. Uh, In addition to that, we've got new products um, uh, in 2016. We've got a new uh, presentation audio program that's available for the general public, helping people to uh, be more proficient speakers and presenters. So mm-hmm. I think that was very important. And, um, you know, we'll be rolling that out as well as a live in Las Vegas oh. three disc program. So <laughs> that's nice too. Okay. Well, the last time you were with us, you were talking about Radiate the Brain Change Your, your Game. Yeah. Can, yeah. Can you give us some golden, golden nuggets in that again? Well, Radiate the Brain and Change the Game <clears throat> is a three-piece set. It's a book set. It's an audio program which focuses on people, places, and things. It's a workbook, and it's a actual book for people to read and learn more about who they are and how to uh, reach their potential. Uh, this book is 21 chapters. Out of the 21 chapters, excuse me, 15 chapters are exercises, insights, and tips. So it's not about just reading the book and putting it down or a book that you just read. It's a personal resource. And when I say personal resource, this book will challenge the reader to be honest with themselves. That's all they have to do is be honest with themselves so they can sort of assess where they are and understand what it takes to get them to the next level. Um, you know, we'll be talking about topics like risk, fear, mistakes, investing, uh, discomfort, you know, things like that. And learning how to really radiate the brain, change your thinking, and change the game. Take different actions. 
So I'm excited about it because not only do we have the book set, and uh, I've been getting rave reviews, which you can check out on my website. We've also started a um, a new uh, website, which is a membership portal uh, for people that are really trying to, uh, you know, take it up a step or two. And that uh, website will be debuted very soon. It's called Change the Brain, and that's a, a site based on the book set, but it's dedicated to those who need the do-it-yourself process or those that want the do-it-for-me process. And we give people a couple of options to get online, you know, take themselves to a process. They can work at their own pace and have all the information available to them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So, Sir Charles, you know, I know you've seen in the news that President Obama is going to be releasing thousands of um, inmates that have mm -hmm. uh, drug convictions and things like that. Now, these, okay. these people are going to be coming out of the prison system. Some have been in there for a very long time. It right. seems like what you have to offer will definitely benefit them. Are you going to do an outreach in that area? You know, I haven't designed it yet, but <clears throat> excuse me, some of my colleagues work with at-risk youth uh, right here in the DMV, and I'm going to design um, a program or create a process, I guess you could say, uh, for people that are reentering society, giving them an opportunity of trying to um, tap into their best selves or their true selves. You know, when people are released from prison, they have so many strikes against them. One, they've lost touch with society. Two, they may have uh, strikes against them, which prevent them from getting specific types of jobs. So why not look into doing something that is a God-given talent, skill, gift, or ability? And many times we don't look at things uh, when the odds are against us. And the reason why is because we're so consumed with the negative effect. I can't get a job. You know, they can't see doing the traditional things to get on their feet. Now, sometimes, they, I, from what I understand, they may even find it difficult to get a job at McDonald's. So that means they have to think outside of the box. That's right. That's so right. in thinking outside of the box, what I, my challenge is, is get them to look inward at what they already have and make that uh, their earnings, make that their way of earning their living. And, you know, you kind of get creative sometimes. You know, you, you can bring a horse to water, and, of course, you can't make him drink, but at the same time, if he stands in the water and long enough, you may get the idea to, to get wet. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but now you also have another set of books in a series that has to do with business. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, the, the Radiate the Brain and Change the Game is the current and the most recent uh, book set that I have, but I am uh, working on a new, uh, a new book that, in a similar fashion, uh, I'm hoping to add value uh, to the lives of those who look at it because I think that, you know, everyone operates off a different um, stimuli, if you will. And what works for one obviously may not work for another, so... I'm looking at doing at least, it's so funny, I just had a meeting earlier today, uh, a collaborative book, which we don't have a title yet, and uh, I know for myself, for what my business is, traditionally I do want to put out another book, but I'm trying to give Radiate the Brain and Change the Game enough time to, uh, to be exposed to the general public because I think it can still do bigger things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I know Radiate the, the um, Brain and Change the Game has been introduced in the federal agencies, a lot of commercial um, organizations. Mm -hmm. What about the one-on-ones, like pe people like me? You know, how can I get at you in front, or how can I get in front of you and try and uh, improve me, <laughs> as we can well, all see? <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a good question, and, and what makes that a good question is that Sometimes people think, <clears throat> excuse me, when you're a business owner, that you just have it all together. And you might. But sometimes there may be one or two things missing or there may be a rebranding needed or you may be thinking about rebranding. And what I've learned 
in the past, I'll say, let's see, whew, man, five, six years, mm-hmm. I must have had at least 12 to 18 different coaches and or mentors. That's right. Now, this is the thing. You go to a coach or a mentor for something specific, usually something different. Sometimes you don't know why, but someone just may be in front of you and they sound good and you decide to work with them. But I've had mentors and coaches on sales, on marketing, on social media, on uh, creating systems, on personal development, on presentation skills. Even though I'm a presenter and I've been presenting for over 17 years, sometimes you need to be re-challenged. So for someone um, that may need some of the coaching that we offer, that I offer, I think it's an excellent opportunity for them to better themselves. Uh, we have coaching in the personal development side as well as the professional development side. So those opportunities are out there also. All they need to do is go to the website, Sir Charles Carey, Inc.com, and they'll see the options. And uh, hopefully I'll, they'll give me the opportunity of helping them polish off some of their skills. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and so I know that going to your website, there are some in-person classes, but are there mm-hmm. webinars or telesummits, things like that? If they live in a different state, they can't commute here for that. What do you have to offer them? Well, for those that are out of town, what I do is Skype sessions, or I may, um, well, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to use Blab for that, but I'll probably do more of the Skype and the online or the uh, one-on-one uh, phone sessions. Uh, I had several clients in the past that seemed to like that personal touch uh, because they weren't in the immediate area, and it worked fine for them. So uh, that's always a good option uh, versus no option at all. So I highly recommend and encourage uh, for people to contact me about their own personal coaching opportunities via Skype and via phone. So I saw some of your videos out there on YouTube, and, and Sir Charles is there on YouTube. You can go and pull those videos down. So I just took some notes on a few things that I'd like you to comment on if you sure. can. Okay, there was one video where you mentioned the right mindset is all you need. Can you expound on that a little? Well, absolutely. You know, it's funny. Yesterday I was at the Martin Luther King Library uh, at the 20th anniversary of a group of poets called Collective Voices, and they had something called Bridging the Gap. And for me, Bridging the Gap, because it's obviously three letters, GAP, G-A-P, for me, Bridging the Gap was gratitude, attitude, and purpose. And the right mindset, it's all about the attitude, the way you think literally, technically, and the way that you act. You know, when you have the right mindset, you're thinking about the things you do, you're thinking about the way you interact with people, you're thinking about pretty much everything that makes up your day. When you're thinking about these things in the proper proper way, meaning a nice even keel, you're trying to be positive, you're being positive, you have a clearer way of viewing life. And everyone doesn't have that. They don't have that clear uh, thought pattern. They don't have, you know, um, tranquility in their lives. So it's about obtaining the right mindset. And I tell people constantly, when you are working in your gift, And I mean literally, when you're working in your gift, where you're designed to be, stress, it goes way down. That's true. And happiness, Mm -hmm. happiness, you can't even measure it. Mm -hmm. And the reason simply is, it's because you're where you're designed to be. Right. Not where you want to be, not where it's nice to be, but where you're designed to be. God has put a gift in all of us, and I'm not trying to, to preach to anyone But the bottom line is at the end of the day, we all have a different set of skills, talent, and makeups that help us to become unique. Even if we're both in the same industry, the way that you would conduct an interview, Tracy, is different to some degree from how I would conduct an interview. Mm -hmm. And there are people that can appreciate 
appreciate both individual styles. Correct. Yes. So when you have the right mindset, that's almost living in perfection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that is so true. <laughs> and when you connect with the right people, and that oh, synergy yes. happens, things begin to explode. New ideas, creativity come. You know, it's just like there's a balance in the yes. environment. Yes. Absolutely. Now. I saw another video or another mm -hmm. clipping, and you mentioned that most people don't want to go um, to a conference. Most people don't want to go to a workshop. Most people right. don't want to go on a webinar. Most people don't want to get on a teleconference. Why? Because people don't want to participate in their own rescue. That's powerful. What do you say Power about that? It's, it's powerfully sad, you know what I mean? And trust me, I am no better, and I am no different. There are times when there may be a conference to go to. It could be a, a social program, a social event, um, maybe even for social or recreational purposes. And sometimes I don't want to go. You know, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know. I think sometimes we just get so comfortable. However, the difference is when you live in that space, meaning that. You're always reserved. Mm -hmm. You're always this recluse. You're always in your cave that you start to lose your, your social compass. You start to lose maybe even your vocabulary because you don't converse with people. Mm -hmm. When you start to lose uh, your, your, your perspective on interacting, you start to lose you know, your opportunities for jobs or advancement. Mm -hmm. It's because many times you're not allowing your, you're not stretching yourself. You're not allowing yourself to grow. Right. And in order to be more, have more, or do more, you must allow yourself to grow. You need to be around people that are doing the things you like to do. Mm -hmm. You need to be around people that are better than you mm -hmm. so that you can grow, expand your mind, and expand your life. That's and it's just sad that some people for, you know, look, sometimes let's, let's keep it real. Sometimes <laughs> people have had bad experiences, and okay. I get that. Yeah. So, so they're shell-shocked. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people, they don't know what they don't know. I get that also. But when you have become an adult, you have a responsibility to you. Mm -hmm. And like I said in that video, you are the CEO of Y O U. That's right. And you have to have a vested interest in everything you do, mm -hmm. every place you go, as well as the people that you're around. That's true. That's true. You have to have a personal vision. Yes, you have a business vision, but you have to have a personal vision that gets you up in the morning, even on the weekends. You don't sleep in. You can't afford to sleep in. You got to get That's up right. and make those connections and do what you need to do. I like That's to tell right. people that, you know, I don't have a hobby. I have a business. Mm -hmm. And I That's am right. constantly working the business. I, sometimes mm -hmm. I am tired of seeing the business, but it has to get done. And I'm the one that does that. So you're right. Yeah. You know, one of my, one of my mentors told me, he says, look, you got to have balance, though. He says, what would you do if you achieved a certain uh, level of success? I said, I'm going to work some more. He says, no, no, no. <laughs> he said, you have to have balance. You have to reward yourself for your successes. And I do get that. But I truly love what I do. I love the opportunity to do a webinar, to do a conference, to do a workshop, to do a presentation. And that is no exaggeration. I really love interacting with people. But I do need to recharge my battery sometimes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I understand when other people feel the same way. They need to sometimes draw back and refresh or recharge their battery. Mm -hmm. But we must be careful of getting too comfortable in that space. That's right. Uh, otherwise, we won't get up and move again. But you got it. Nail on the head. You mentioned one other thing. And, and just to piggyback on what you said about what you love to do, you said, what is the thing you talk about and smile inside when you're talking about it? You mm -hmm. may have met your purpose. Yeah, yeah. I like to close with that when I do presentations and, and conferences and trainings because if I haven't said anything throughout the whole 45 minutes, hour of doing a presentation, 
I think that may help a person really catch the vision, catch the vision and understand how important it is, not to me, but how important it is, can be to them. Because if you think, if they hear that one phrase, what is the thing that you talk about more than anything else? And when you talk about it, a smile comes to your face. Mm -hmm. When they hear that, mm -hmm. their minds are racing all over the place. Or instantly they go to something specific. Right. And when they go to that thing, I'm sure someone has said, you mean to tell me I can be doing this all the time? <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or I can I can make this a business, really? Oh yes. Yes. Yes, yes you can. Yes. Yeah, so. Absolutely. So you know what? Um that's a, a great place to close, but I want to wrap okay. up with you talking about what you're coming to mentor me memorable moments, uh, and and what you're gonna be offering to us. Okay. Okay. Well, um I have a set of programs called the Cure Series. And in the Cure Series, we talk about personal development as well as professional development. My area of focus mainly is transformational leadership or change management, as some call it. And I think it's important that if you're going to have a platform, that what you share on that platform is not just what you, you're good at, but something that can benefit others. And uh, I love, again, I love people, and what I love to talk about is what I'm good at. And, again, because I've spoken to people and I see their eyes roll back in the back of their head and their minds are starting to wonder about some of the information I'm sharing, I want to be able to bring that to uh, to the platform. You know, it's I think it's just a great opportunity to give people uh, uh, something to really uh, consider, for themselves, in themselves, with themselves, and maybe with others. Yes, yes. I can act actually see little mentees sitting all around uh, their little devices taking golden nugget notes from you. Yes, <laughs> this yes. This is going to be a treat. I'm taking golden nugget, nugget notes from you as well. <laughs> well, fantastic. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. So, sir, everyone, Sir Charles is going to be here Sunday, January the 31st uh, at 6 p.m. He is going to have a special program the fifth Sunday of every month. You can tune in to Around the Mic with Sir Charles. Carey. And again, he's going to be right here live in the studio at WLVS Radio, sitting with William and myself for Mentor Me Memorable Moments. So is there are there any closing comments that you'd like? Yes, there's his contact information that you'd like to share with us, Sir Charles, before we, uh, we terminate this interview. Well, if they don't have the contact information, um, I can share that. And that's SirCharlesCareyInc.com. And if they use the, um, I give them a call, promo code, CURE, C-U-R-E. If they're interested in truly making some changes before I get there, use the promo code C-U-R-E, CURE, and they can get that book set with a 25% discount. Now, if they like to read about um, lessons learned in hindsight from being a two-time cancer survivor and overcoming substance abuse and things of that nature, they can put in the, um, what is the promo code? Courage. Courage. Mm -hmm. Put in the promo code Courage, and they can get that book set also at a 25% discount. So Excellent. Excellent. And you can look at um, Sir Charles's bio through MentorMe411.com and connect with him, uh, just to enter your information in that email box, and that email will go directly to Sir Charles. No one else will see your communication with him. So again, thank you for coming onto the program and getting us caught up and, and announcing that you're gonna be with us going forward. We are excited and cannot wait to see you. And we also have a contact us, um, a little slide up, so everyone has your information and hopefully you get flooded with emails and messages as well. Sounds good. Thank you so much, and I look forward to speaking with you very soon. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.
Okay, so we're going to go into the second half now, which is uh, the financial health segment, and that is me. And um, I've been tweeting out there. If you're not connected with me on social media, I will send that information to you or put a slide up so that you can connect with me. But tonight, we're going to be talking about the prenuptial agreement. Should you have one? You Should you ask for it? You know, what is it all about? You know, will it help you in the end, or are you just going to argue about it when you even bring it up? So before we do that, I have a video that I want you to take a look at um, because I need your mind to be open and accepting when I talk about the prenuptial agreement is is you is or is you ain't my baby you know so then why are you asking me for a prenuptial agreement so let's take a look at this video first well with women reaching new heights in the corporate ladder making more money sometimes than even their spouse they're also finding they're having to take added responsibility when their marriage goes south more and more women are paying their former husband's alimony and child support than ever before I went to news reporter Darla Miles has more a girlfriend of mine made my dress uh, we didn't have much money or anything, so, you know, we did everything ourselves. 48-year-old Janet Logan married her first husband when she was 22. We were kids. We were still in college. Neither finished college, but Logan soared up the corporate ladder in the retail industry while her then-husband worked on and off in construction. The peak of my career while I was married... I was just about six figures. His peak was probably half of that. So when she decided to get a divorce after 19 years of marriage, she was slapped with $1,500 a month alimony payments. So women in New Jersey or anywhere else are oftentimes subject to paying alimony now as either the breadwinner of the relationship or we call it manimony, we call it malimony. But under New Jersey law, its legal name is permanent alimony, says expert divorce attorney Barry Weinberger. Permanent alimony is oftentimes fixed when you have a long-term marriage and a disparity of income between the two spouses. And there's not a part of you that is not the least bit better that he didn't do enough financially? Um, I'm, that's not who I am. But unlike Logan, a lot of other breadwinning women are a lot less gracious about accepting the fact they're going to be the ones paying alimony. They are not having it. They think that there is no reason that if they are out and they're working and they're doing what they need to do, that their spouse can't be equally self-sufficient. But permanent or lifetime alimony can be amended if the higher wage earning spouse retires and makes less money or if the former spouse who is receiving alimony gets remarried. How long do you have to pay that? Four more years. In Parsippany, New Jersey, Darla Miles, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. Did you ever think you'd see the day? Well, let's say, I'm going to open myself up to you. And um, about 1996 was when I got married the first time. And um, it didn't go too well, and so we filed for divorce. And my attorney told me then that, you know, brace yourself, you may have to pay him alimony. And he's entitled to your pension as well. Well, I flipped out. And she said, unless you can get him to sign this paper, then you're going to have to pay that, that bill. And, and so, no, I worked on that, and, and brother did sign that paper, but it just threw me that this could now happen to women. So here we are, fast forward, and we are in 2015, and it's happening not only in the state of Massachusetts, but also in the state of Florida and other states have this permanent alimony law. And so why are you talking about this, Tracy? When, you, when we should be talking about prenuptial agreements, I need you to embrace that the world is changing around us females. Feminism is what we wanted. Equal um, or Equality is what we were asking for. And brother, believe me, it's coming and it's here. And so I want to talk to you about the prenuptial agreement so that you will be able to go into your marriage or your next marriage really understanding some things that you should be asking for. And uh, I don't think it's a question of should I ask for the prenuptial agreement. I think you should. But anyway, let's take a look at the first slide, Mike. I want you to think about some things. I want you to think about that we are now in multiple marriages. And, and some of us are married for the first time, the second time, the third time, the fourth time. And we're going to keep going until we hit it right. And it, the marriages are getting messy all of the time. Uh, you think that it's okay for the first time to be divorced and it's um, accepting to be married a second time, but 
after a while that some of that just begins to be old nature and you're burning yourself out and you're burning bridges and you're not sure what it is that you want because every time you go into one of these marriages you're losing a piece of yourself and you're losing property and so you got to get smart you got to start asking for premarital uh, uh, prenuptial agreement so let's take a look at the second slide please Okay, so think about this. Now you are in this uh, relationship and um, you're thinking about getting married, but your intended has debts. Well, if you marry this person, those debts now become yours. That's what happened to me in marriage number one. He had some debts and I was debt free. And oh my gosh, within four months, I was almost $20,000 in debt. And when they can't get it from the intended, they're coming after you. So is that what you really want to go into a marriage knowing that this debt could possibly be yours and not doing anything to make plans or arrangements. You know, we got to start thinking smart. So let's take a look at the next slide. When we're looking at this slide, we're thinking about um, the family. And, and some families don't like the person that you're dating for whatever reason. If you're on marriage number two or three, oh my gosh, they are questioning your stabi mental stability. But if you're dating someone like a female dating someone much younger than her, well, we're classified as the cougar relationship. And those that are looking for the money, you tell me the money, are classified as the gold digger. And then we have those relationships which are May, December. They are so far apart in age that it's like, is that your granddad? No, that's my intended. Okay, all right, this is something new. All right, so now you've got this relationship and your family is saying protect yourself because they don't know what the motive is for the other person. You're so blind in love that you're probably not even seeing it yourself. So what's the problem with bringing up the prenuptial agreement? Just to talk about it and see if it hits a sore spot with somebody. Uh, and if not, then they're accepting, then great, you've got a, a basis to start a really good relationship that perhaps will last a very long time. But I have one more slide I want you to take a look at as far as thinking about it. Now this is somebody that you are intending to marry and whether they have children or you have children, now the children are brought into the mix of this. And so the question is, are you with this person with the motive or the intent to take from the children what's rightfully theirs. Okay, so this is what you have to think about as well. If you have the child or the children, this person that you're dating, that you're planning on marrying, uh, are your children protected? Is their stuff protected? I mean, if you mention to that person, oh, you know what, my son's getting that, my daughter's getting that, and oh, you're going to get this, would they have a fit with that? So I think you should be talking about prenuptial agreements to make sure that everything is fair and that your children get what's entitled to them. So let's take a look at the next slide now. What is a prenuptial agreement? Well, it's a prenup, a contract that's entered in prior to marriage or civil union or any other agreement before the marriage agreement. And it primarily includes provisions for division of property and spousal support in the event of a divorce, a breakup, or um, a, of the relationship, or a death. Prenup agreements are recognized in all 50 states, including the District of Columbia and many of the foreign nations. They just come in different packages. But there are some countries that say, well, we're not getting married unless there's a prenup. Okay, this is what we're bringing into the marriage. And what are you bringing into the marriage? If nothing, okay, then this is what you're, if the marriage is over with, this is what we're taking out of the marriage. And if you brought nothing in, there's a chance that you get nothing if the marriage um, dissolves. But then there's a chance that maybe that person is um, uh, fair and forgiving and, and gracious that they'll leave you with a little something depending on the length of the marriage. We don't know. Next slide, please. So the elements of a prenup are, it's an agreement that must be in writing. It cannot be oral. 
It cannot, because if you are with the individual on day one, and you decide that you want to marry him a few months to a year down the road, and he's making promises to you, or she's making promises to you that you're going to always be taken care of, no matter what happens, I'm going to make sure that you get what's coming to you. Well, we hope that's a good thing. <laughs> but you want to make sure that it is in writing. Let's be smart. Get it in writing. It must be executed voluntarily. You know, social media has this picture of this woman in a bridal dress, and she's standing with the groom, and they're very close together, and her arm is not in the picture at all. But when they flip that picture around, you see that her arm is jacked up in the back by him, like he's twisting it. And she's got this fake smile on, so you think they're happy in this marriage, but in fact, they're not not. This is not a voluntary marriage. So you want to make sure that when you uh, execute this prenuptial agreement that everyone is in agreement with this. So you got to tell somebody. You have to share what's going on with you so that you're not forcing or, uh, a signature under duress. So you also want to make sure that there is a full and fair disclosure at the time of execution. Don't be hiding property, okay? Don't be hiding bank accounts. You know, you got a, a house in Malibu and one in Florida and another one in Maine, and you're only talking about the one in Maine and Florida, and the intended doesn't even know about that place in California. That could null and void your prenuptial agreement. So you want to be open and honest about everything you have. I know it's difficult. I know it is in this economy, but you got to do it. And you have to, the agreement cannot be unconscionable. It cannot have such crazy mess in there that people would want to look at you as if you grew two heads. Okay, it's got to be sound and reasonable. Okay, so, you know, don't talk about, I've got to have, um, steak and potatoes um, that is done just right, raw, and, you know, all that craziness. You know, nobody can do that. No, no one can do that. So it's, it's got to be reasonable. So that's what you want to look for when you are looking at a prenuptial agreement. It can be executed by both parties. Um, attorneys really aren't supposed to execute a prenuptial agreement. They can advise you, yes. They can give you recommendations. But the person who's going to really put the stamp on your prenuptial agreement is is the notary, the notary public. Okay, so why do people consider prenups? Well, for a lot of reasons. You know, you've had a bitter divorce. Hello, but I'm over it, you know. <laughs> Bless God, I'm over it. Um, you've had a bitter divorce proceedings, and so you're a little cautious now in your second time around, and thank God for second times. Um, people may want to provide a sense of peace and trust. I just want to know that I'm going to be okay if this marriage ends. So I just want a prenuptial agreement. That's all. Just a little contract. Just a little something something that tells me that I'm going to be fine should you kick me out the house. They just want it for peace of mind and, and some, some trust. And a prenup seems to be the right thing to do. Now, in this economy, I'm thinking that it's the right thing to do. But what are we really afraid of? Well, this is a conversation that we need to have with the intended. So when we're looking at the things that we're afraid of, we're really looking at how we were brought up um, viewing money. So if you came from uh, an environment where money is strapped and you didn't have enough, then, yeah, you've got some fears, and, and that prenuptial agreement is going to speak loud for those fears. So when we're looking at how can I begin a conversation on this, you got to start early. you got to start when you meet someone and you're learning what color they like and what type of food they want to enjoy, that's when you bring up the prenuptial um, agreement. You know, what do you think about this? You know, the economy is changing and people are turning to this. What are your thoughts about this? If they get upset, okay, you need to understand why they're upset even just talking about this. You didn't execute anything. You didn't draw up anything. You didn't sign anything. You're just asking for a conversation. That's all. You also want to decide on the terms. If you do want a prenuptial agreement, then this is what I want my prenuptial agreement to say. I bought the lamps. I love the lamps. I want to take those lamps with me when I leave, okay? That is not an unconscionable request, all right? Unless the lamps are worth some 
a heck of a whole lot of money, then maybe you got a fight on your hands. But those are the things you want to talk about early on when you say, yeah, a prenuptial agreement is something that we should have. You also want to own it. If you say this is what you want, then you better be able to own it. Yes, I, 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 I didn't, I'm not changing my mind. No, I, no, I didn't decide on this and, and change my mind. I want that. No, this is it. Everything that I have outlined in this prenuptial agreement that I can see, this is what I want to walk away with. Everything that you have outlined that I can see, okay, I'll let you walk away with that. But you got to own it. You also want to engage active listening. This is not the time to argue. It really isn't. If you're getting to the point where you're arguing, stop and just walk away from a minute for, it, for a minute, a day, a week, a month, a year. Um, active listening is giving the person an opportunity to explain to you why they want that. It could be an heirloom that had been in the family for generations. They loved you so much that they gave the heirloom to you. Wouldn't it be the right thing to do to return it if the marriage did not work out? And then you want to leave room for a, a change over time. The economy is constantly evolving around us. Things are going to change. Um, currency is changing. And I, yes, I am preparing a program on that. So you want to make sure that you leave enough room in your prenuptial agreement that you can come back and make a change that's not so drastic that you got to draw it up all over again, but enough to modify it to be um, in alignment with the economy and the changes in your life and your intended's life, things like that. So you want to add topics um, or add this topic to your premarital counseling when you're going in to that. Put pre um, the prenup on the table and discuss that. Now, what about your money personality? You know, did you know you have a money personality? Go on out there and Google. There are a lot of assessment tests that will tell you what your personality is like. I found one that identified five personality types, and it says that each of us has at least two of these five personality types. The saver is the one that rarely spends impulsively. They like to pay off every bill in full. They don't like interest rates. They don't like interest at all. They want to get that bill done within 30 days if they can. The spender is the one who's carefree with the money. They're not necessarily rich because they can go into a dollar store and blow it up. You know, they just love to spend money. It makes them feel good. The risk taker is the one that loves a financial challenge. They like risk. They try new ideas at any cost. It doesn't bother them at all if they lose money. This is just how they're wired. They love the risk. The security seeker is the fiscal future. Um, person that he's he wants everything to be settled and to be safe there is no risk whatsoever and don't even try and push that person in that direction they have to know that everything is there in case the bottom drops out of the economy that they're going to be all right and then you have the flyer it doesn't think anything about money they're not anxious not consumed there's no emotional response sometimes that's a good thing sometimes that is not because the flyer could be someone that may not be filthy rich, but you know, money comes, easy come, easy go. It's no big thing, you know. That is their philosophy. They're, they're gonna always have money. But then it could be someone that, I, that says, I don't wanna talk about the bills. I don't wanna talk about what we owe. I, here, you take it. You budget the household income. I don't wanna know about it. Just tell me where to sign. And you don't really want to have that kind of person in, engaged in conversation with you. So everyone has at least two money personalities. And I can share with you, mine is the saver and the security seeker. And so then you have to look at what's your intended. Are they someone that's different? You know, am I going to marry a spender? I mean, that's going to freak me out if I'm a saver. How are we going to get through that if every time we make it, we spend it? So you've got to have those open conversations. And those open conversations are called the money, pers uh, um, the money huddles. So if you take a look at the next slide, the money huddles are really that talk that you're supposed to have. That talk is the time that you spend together looking over 
the budgets. And, it, and you don't have to be married. You don't have to be planning a marriage. It could be a roommate situation. It could be a family member situation. It could be a situation where you are, um, are taking over someone's funds or household incomes. You've got to have time where you're spending time together talking about it. A as in assigned duties. Okay, we see the big picture. We know what all the debts are coming in. Now here, I can pay this and you can pay that one, okay? And it looks like this one may be kind of big, so let's split this one 60, 40, 50, 50, 30, 70, however it's gonna make the, um, the both of you feel financially that not one person is taking on the entire financial burden. So you wanna assign the task or the duties. Then you wanna list your goals, okay. Here are the bills that we have. What do we want to pay off right now? What can we do in the next um, quarter, in the next six months? What can we have pay off by the end of the year? Or maybe there's a trip that you want to go on. In order to do that, you have to combine your funds in order to do that so that you can go and have a, a great time on your vacation. These are the goals that you want to list. And then you want to keep it consistent. You want to talk to your intended to make sure that they're always um, aware of what's happening. They're on board with what's going on. So you want to make these uh, consistent meetings, uh, either date nights or, or business meetings within the household or however you want to frame it. But make sure you have one at least once a week or once a month, once a quarter, so that each of you know what, what's happening with um, the income and the finances. So when you're looking at it's time for money huddles and sunset, sunset provisioning. So, well, what is that? You can put in your prenuptial agreement that, you know what, I, I love you, I trust you, but I have some fears. And so what I want to do is put in that agreement that after six months of marriage, if everything is going okay, then let's go ahead and let this thing lapse. You know, it will void out at, um, and we won't have to worry about a prenuptial at all. You can also put in, put in your prenuptial that, you know, after the first, second, or third child, the uh, woman or the husband will stop working, stay home, and take care of the babies. Um, homeschool them if they have to because daycare gets kind of um, expensive after the third child. So you may want to put that in your prenuptial agreement. You also may want to look at that your spouse cannot commit funds, household funds, without your approval, without your knowledge of it. So they won't, the spender won't go out there and spend up the household savings, buy new furniture or a Gucci bag or whatever. You know, you got to know about these things before they hit the shopping center. You can put that in your prenuptial agreement. So the agreement can have everything in it to um, help the um, you determine um, whether or not you want the agreement to continue at all. So let's look at the, the next slide. And this is a question that I'm sure some folks are asking out there. Is it too late for me to have a, a, a prenuptial agreement? Well, yeah, it is too late for you to have that, but it's not too late for you to have a postnuptial agreement. If you're already married, and I don't think it matters how, how long you've been married, but if you're already married and you see some things that are just surfacing that you had not seen before and it's causing friction in your marriage and before you go to divorce court you want to give this a try then a postnuptial agreement is a good way to start you know you can get a mediator you can get a counselor you can get a lawyer to sit down and help you draw up some things and work out some things um, you can decide that yeah I'm going to take that lamp okay because the lamp costs so much and is worth so much you, you take one lamp and I'll take the other land. You know, people can help you draw those things out to, to make it better for you. Um, so then if your marriage is in trouble, then what I would recommend is that you seek counseling or seek a coach. A counselor will take you back into your past to determine what your money fears are. A coach will go back there, but they'll also want to propel you to a place you want to be going forward. So they're not going to spend a whole lot of time in your past. But you want to discuss how your financial affairs and assets will be 
be divided in the case of a divorce or separation. You want to describe the division of all the property acquired individually and together. You need to have a clear explanation as to that. And the best way to do that is when you find those lamps that are on sale in the Sunday paper, cut them out and put them in your journal. Okay, go buy them. And now you have a picture of the lamp and how much it costs. And so you can do division of property that way. And you want to outline the details about the debts. You know, who's going to walk away with what debt so that one spouse is not walking away with everything. I tell you, palimony and is, is a horrible thing, particularly in some cases where pal, um, alimony is being um, uh, served on a person forever. I mean, and I won't say anymore. I'm going, I'm going to do a show on that. Okay, let me just finish getting through this. Okay, so let's take a look at um, the benefits of a prenuptial agreement. You know, second, third marriage we talked about, um, protecting the children and the assets. Uh, if you can put in there, if someone is unfaithful and, and they're caught in the act, you know, maybe you'll go to counseling before you actually file a divorce. Uh, you can step out of the workforce and uh, to take care of that person if they're ill or to take care of your family member if, that, if that's ill, but you want to be taken care of too if the um, the marriage ends and and you you have no income because you came out of the workforce and you, you want to make sure that um, if you, the businesses that you created together flourish that you get your share um, of that and that you get it without arguing at a settlement agreement so you want to decide all these things now so let's wrap up with this last slide is a prenup or postnuptial the best thing for you well money talks can be uncomfortable and if you're finding yourself hard, uh, finding it hard to discuss those things, then maybe you de do need a prenuptial agreement because the only thing that's going to break out later on is a fight over who's going to get what. And as far as if you are a stay-at-home spouse or you're expecting an inheritance, uh, you may want to have those post-nuptials um, drawn up to make sure that you walk away with the family uh, stuff and not somebody who doesn't like you, doesn't care for you, and, and wants you to just be a, a horrible, miserable person the rest of your life. But let's put, it, put up this last slide on how to contact me. And we said a whole lot on the prenuptial agreement. So if you want to talk to me, you can talk to me on Twitter. Here's all of my information. My hashtag is MentorMe411. Give me a, a, a shout out, send me some questions and, and I'll answer them either on this program or I will contact you specifically. So this is the end of the financial health segment and I thank you for joining us and I thank Sir Charles for coming back to let us know what he's doing too. There's a week between us, we're coming back with physical health, got a surprise for you there. Until then, be safe, be smart, be healthy. Bye-bye. <laughs>